previous video on this channel, Net Positive, I showcased the making of the world's fastest solar-powered electric water ski boat. This 53 mile an hour silent boat is powered by seven Tesla batteries, which are wired in series. There's four of them back here under this bracket hooked up with 4 watt gauge welding wire, and I wanted to find out if I really needed to use the thermal cooling loop on these. So I wanted to test one battery to failure to determine what would happen, and here's the result. These battery modules are cleverly designed with a liquid cooling ribbon that goes in between all the cells, back and forth through them, and out here. I have not been using that cooling loop on my boat, but I'm to determine if I need it. There are 444 it. individual 18650 Panasonic cells in these packs. And I went ahead and drove this module to overload, thermal overload and overcurrent overload, and all that happened was the pack failed by these little microfuses blowing. Each each cell is wired up with a current limiting uh, electrode on it. So it was a very undramatic failure of the battery pack as it just blew 10 of these microfuses and the pack went out of service. So I'm going to dismantle this pack and show uh, the nature of that. Battery modules are a six series, 72 parallel configuration. And so there's 72 of these little microfuses that carry up to 1500 amps, which is pretty amazing because these are pretty delicate little things. Just disabling them, just dismembering them is just, a little flick is all it takes. Now, peeling open the uh, battery pack itself is proving much more work. Uh, each of these basically bus bars connect 72 parallel batteries into a series of six cells. So they're roughly four volts per cell uh, and 24 volts for the entire module. So this does not peel off easily. These are clearly not designed for uh, individual cells to be replaced. Each bank of 72 cells, there's six of them, has a, a BMS or battery management system wire that comes back to here so that the charger is able to shunt individual uh, sets of 72 cells to keep the charge in balance and avoid a uh, charge problem or thermal overload. Go ahead and pull those out. Each module is held in place by a 13 millimeter metric nut. These are uh, actually being aluminum, not as not as heavy duty as you might expect for something that carries 1500 amps. Again, peeling back the bus bar. It seems to be glued down and soldered, of course, to each terminal of the batteries. The modules weigh about 55 pounds each, and it's a uh, Taking some force to get those off. In addition to the adhesive, you can sort of see here are little plastic clips that also help expand out to clip the edge of the aluminum. Next, I remove the nut insert, and with all the bus bars removed from the top of the battery, I can now remove the plastic casing that's holding the individual cells. As you can see, the plastic does not want to come off either. It's held in with some kind of epoxy. So the plastic top that's holding all of these cells snapped into place there's a little bit of a ridge right there on the top of the battery that the plastic rings kind of snap down onto. There may additionally be some glue on there, but I think it's mostly just the, the snapping of the plastic here. In addition to the seven wire, uh, six section BMS system, they've also got a uh, thermal sensor here. That's just a temperature sensor that goes on Apparently one or two of the cells here. So each set of 72 cells flips polarity so that they can be wired in series. So you can see this batch, we're looking at, at one end of the battery and then it switches to the other 
end of the battery. These do not have the ridge, as mentioned on the other end of the battery, and yet we're still getting uh, plastic residuals. So it, it is apparently glued in at, at both ends, making this very difficult to get off. So here you can see some of that residual glue down in there. Although this pack is fully discharged, I feel a little better working on it now that all of the bus bars have been removed. You can see the little wires sticking up on it. So now every cell, every individual 4 volt battery in this pack is disconnected at both ends. And so it's uh, safer to handle at this point and no risk of shorting out a major battery. Now with the first cell fully exposed, I can break it as of its adhesive at the bottom and pull out one Panasonic 18650 cell. Now after ripping the side open with a very large pair of channel locks, you can get down to the individual cooling ribbons here. Each side is coated in this sort of corrugated rubber and then inside, the actual aluminum or copper piping, I'm guessing aluminum. It was held in place by this sort of corrugated spacer to help push the ribbons down in between the cells a little bit. I was expecting to see this transition into a series of about five or six individual tiny tubes but in fact, it's really just a hollow ribbon, quite a piece of, of engineering, manufacturing. It fluid can flow in this hole and through these, this micro channel uh, that runs all the way the length, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight times the length of this battery at about two feet each, about, probably about 16 or 18 feet of that cooling This is ribbon. one of the most difficult products I've ever opened. Everything is just tight. So this is amazing. In prying this aluminum sidebar off, the metal would rather tear than this bead of plastic and glue give way. That is some tough glue and this must be polycarbonate because it's about the toughest plastic. And from the side you can see that the cooling ribbon is nowhere near as wide as the batteries are tall. That and the fact that it feeds from one end and zigzags back and forth out the other end, I have to wonder how uneven the cooling is or heating, and if that's at all of an issue. Even with the bus bars peeled off, the plastic topping peeled back, these batteries are still coming out stuck together. And those plastic and adhesives are really durable. After about uh, three hours of chiseling carefully at the plastic, I'm about halfway done dismantling the battery. I've damaged a couple of the cells getting them out, but for the most part, just going slow. Um, everything's coming out just as crumbs, pretty much. Teardown is complete. This is the bin of crumbs that is left after completely dissembling the pack the completed radiator removal that's a pretty nice design way to cool a battery and all uh, the 444 cells now that the packs all torn down uh, we're going to destruct a few of the cells and see what happens uh, when you cut them in half After chopping the cell in half, there's a slight lithium smell and the battery is warm to the touch and you can see a little bubbling going on here. So there's the insides of the cell shorted out and bubbling off a little bit, but again they're a little uncomfortable to the touch warmth wise, but nothing bursting into flames. Measuring the temperature of the cell. 
at 105 degrees. So that was for a cell measuring 3.3 volts DC. So that was the uh, destruction test for uh, the Tesla battery modules that are used in the boat. Um, just for comparison, the tractor has uh, two or three optional uh, of these packet style batteries, a little bit different design, different setup. They go into 48 volt bricks. And um, overall, very pleased with the safety of these uh, cells. <laughs>